Another lovely time to have someone in the studios of Elegwete TV. My name is Edafi Matthew Esiogene. As you all know, I have a wonderful guy here. I mean, I met him some time ago and I pretty much knew that it was going somewhere to happen. And uh, we are glad to be part of the story and looking at him in the studio, very resplendent, looking awesome and all twitched up in the words of Paula De Farassi, looking mm. all bo -bo -boa and you know, ubiquitous in his homemaking. Makes me feel good that uh, there is future for Nigerian coaches. The days where Nigerian coaches dress like fishermen, looking all terrible, is phasing away. When you think of the coach of Bagada SC and how prime and proper it looks, and then we have uh, Coach Olumide again, looking all you know, clean, well trained. You could take him for. Uh, a celebrity in music, movie, or something else. Uh, I have a wonderful young man with me in the studio today, and we're going to talk about his journey, his story. I, I guess it's not we talking, he's going to tell us his story. Coach Elumide, you're welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Um, the way we do it here, we like to get it from the horse's mouth. So uh, I'll need you to tell your story from the beginning. But first of all, who are you? Who is Olumide? Um, my name is uh, Ajibola De Olumide Joseph. I'm 31 years old. Um, I was born in Lagos, first act town precisely. Um, I'm the last son of my family. When you say last son, how many are you? There's seven. Okay. Um, I grew up playing football in the in first act in the in the estate. I grew up with a lot of musicians phase, uh, two phase, and they all come around. But it was football at the end of the day. I used to be in goal. When they, uh, <laughs> when they are playing, I just be in goal. And you look it anyway. Um, but after secondary school, I played football in secondary school. What primary school did you attend? I went to Laurel, Laurel International. And then secondary school? F4 secondary school, Ikeja. Okay. Yes, I played a lot of football in secondary school. Um, the normal kind of secondary normal, school, yeah, run around, the house board, and where the ball goes. At, you know, I, was, I was an attacking player then, I scored a lot of goals. I, I think I scored a lot of goals. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like that. So I, um, after that, I knew I wanted to coach because I was fascinated about PlayStation and how, you know, when you're playing PlayStation, you have this control over what the players do, where they run. So I practically wanted to actually have human beings running like that and control maybe their movements and when they move and all that. So it was the first thing that came to my mind. And of course, my, my family supported me not to be a coach, but if you want to play football or something, it's, it's really up to you. Um, so after secondary school, I went to Unilag for a diploma. Uh, but I started an academy at the same time. So it was tough. I was so passionate about it. What's the name of your academy? It was called Crystal Rovers. It were based in Ogun State and it was so far away from the city center and nobody knew what we were doing. But I was practically using my allowance to get footballs, to try and get jerseys. So I was not actually going to class. I was missing a lot of classes and I really didn't do any diploma. So I couldn't get into Unilag at that point. Uh, so I, I had to go to UNAB. You flunk it <laughs> for football. I did, I did, um, and I went to UNAB to start again pre degree, but I didn't leave football. Actually, I used my first um, accommodation fee to buy the FA Cup form for. Are you serious? Yes, that's what I did. Um, the FA chairman for Ogun State is late now, um, Mr. Leo. I remember I took the money to him and he was like, who sent you? I was like, I sent myself, it's my club. It's like, why are you doing this? Like, in my community, nobody even plays FA Cup. Now, I'm in the community that is not Festac, it's not Cosmopolitan, it's in the rural area and we want to do something with football. So we played, we went out in the first round. What community is that? It's in Ijoko, home okay. state, very, very far. Um, so I started a team with another coach in the community. Um, 
with about 40 kids without wearing shoes. Sorry, how old were you at, that, at this time? I was 17. Okay. Were, were your parents very rich? Like, your parents are super rich, right? My parents are not rich. Okay. Continue. They are not rich, but, but I'm, I won't say they are poor. But at the end of the day, they just they provided Why everything am I crying? that we needed. Um, so we had training. We were having one or two footballs, and it was going on like that. For years, we went to camps, played tournaments. Some matches, we would go and walk back because there's no money, but it was fun. Um, and I was still going on the internet. The internet was really slow at that time. So you have to go to a cyber cafe and stay there and print coaching manuals, things that I can read and give it to the coach to interpret. And I wanted to expand. So I was expanding in stage by stage. I was schooling Nabil Kuta also going to Gateway to learn. I, I failed PHS uh, 101 physics because it was always on Monday morning. And Monday morning was Gateway training after a league match. So I had to be there to watch to see how they prepare after the league match. So I was missing classes. I missed a lot of tests. Um, carry over. I eventually did it. Who was the coach of Gateway at the time? Uh, there was Coach Love Day. Love Day Omori. Yes. After that, Coach Benga Ogumbote came. Um, these people didn't know me. I was just a random guy coming to training. Um, in the feeders team, there was Coach Obilo, a really good coach. Great coach, yeah. Yeah, and he was also directing me on, okay. He allowed me a lot of access to the pitch, to listen to him, to observe and see the corrections and what he was doing. So I was taking a lot of practical knowledge, even though I had no certificate or NIS or nothing. Um, so after school, I knew clearly that I was going to coach because running an academy. Did you eventually graduate? Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. I did. I was studying food science and technology. I graduated. I really liked my course because eventually I felt yeah, in the future, maybe uh, food is a constant thing. It's so. a constant thing. Yeah. yeah, so food processing was something that And I even really liked. in this coaching that you are, yeah. food is the key. As Vegas' greatest achievement is coming to the Premier League and changing the way they eat. Yeah. It's important because the courses that I had in while I was in school helped me now in terms of nutrition, what type of food they should eat pre-match, post-match. Um, so yes, it was very, very helpful. Um, I graduated and I'm happy. Um, so I'll, in all of this madness, the galaxy was preparing you for something? Yes, it, it was. I didn't see the end point of what I was going to become, but it was clear in my mind that if I continued, I would eventually get somewhere. A wise man once told me in Port Harcourt, he said, be ready, always show up. The boss will not be there every time you show up, but always show up. One day the boss will be there. Yeah. And when, when you are there and the boss comes, you are on the journey. Yes, I, I believe that statement because when I, when, I, when I came back from service, and walked in a... No, 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 let's not fast. Let's not be too fast now. Fast. When you finish school, what happened in between service and all that? Let's, let's get the story. Okay, after university, I, I was already working or coaching at Westerloo. Every break, I'm at Westerloo. Westerloo Academy owned by Dosu Joseph. Okay. Um, I was introduced to him by uh, Akim Obunlade. He yeah. moved into our community, so he was a popular person being an ex-international. Ex so yeah. definitely, I was attracted to him because he's... A, as a professional, so I wanted to learn from him. So a lot of stories about his clubs in Germany, in different places, you know. So I watch him train, his advice to young players. So he took me to Dosu Joseph, you know, I met him. And your first meeting with Dosu Joseph, an Olympic gold medalist. Yes. How was it? Uh, it was, uh, it was really, it was not weird because I, I was thinking, you know, you know, most footballers have this aura about them, like yes. Nigerian footballers, like you can't really approach them. But he's totally different. This is different. It's totally different. He's warm, he's accepting, he's understanding, you know. So he looked at me. I, when I met him initially, I was introducing my academy. Like, look, I have an academy. I've got players. Maybe some of my players can graduate to your academy. And he said, okay. So I was going there as a, should I say, club owner. <laughs> And but you were yeah at that point. But then I saw what they were doing there, and what I was doing where I was. And if I continued to just have an academy where the players are not actually getting proper training, 
then I might be wasting a lot of people's time. You know, like we are playing football where in somebody's academy, we don't know anything yet. Okay, I need to learn. I have to stop thinking I have to be a boss immediately. I have to learn and grow. And so I said, boss, I want to work in your academy. So I stopped being a club owner. Uh, at that point, I had clubs. Uh, I had a club in, in Nijoko, junior and senior. I had in Abeokuta, and I was hoping to open one in Lagos. I was just expanding. My expansion was just five balls. That's what the expansion was, a pitch and five balls. But it was, football coaching is more than that. It's more than the football that you just put. People can play football in school. If you start an academy, you should have, you know, a process and a structure behind it that can actually let the players develop. And there was nothing there. So I didn't want to fool myself and say, let's continue this journey that won't lead anywhere. I had to go and learn. So I stopped going there in jeans and jacket and went there in shorts and shoes and socks and started picking cones for Coach Akim Ogunlade. And that's what I was doing, practically. Learning, I was on the pitch. Just who was giving me tips every time, tips. Why, okay, go and lead this team on the warm-up. Okay, do this. Okay, why didn't you do that? Things like that. And I, I made a lot of mistakes, but I was in the deep end of it. A lot of professionals will come back, Dilea, Dilea, Ajiboye, some of these guys will come um, and they would share tips. Haruna Lukman, they all come around to train and they would let the young players see a reason why they should keep working and young coaches also believe. So that part of my life was so significant and I owe so much to Dosu Joseph for the opportunity. Um, it wasn't about money, there was no money, it was not a club. So we were just going day by day. And, and when I had to go for service, he gave me money. He said, I think, give me 10,000, I think. He said, you've been very helpful. And we'll, we'll see you after service. You know, so I, I practically became the head coach before I left. Um, Akim Ogunladi had to leave for, for some reasons. So he said, can you handle the team? I was like, yeah, I was like after two years. <laughs> It was after I won FA Cup run, and he said, well, would you handle the team? I was like, okay, let's do this. And I, I had so much that I've read on the internet, but I was not practicing what I was reading. So um, if I reverse a little bit, I still now continued like an elite team in my community. Yeah. Because I was now working in, in a bigger place. Yeah. So I had to now, well, I was not the head coach. I was the assistant, so I was not practicing a lot. I was not really imputing in the drills and the methodology. So I had to find a place where I could do that. So I still had a bunch of kids and I was still training them with the newfound experience. Yeah. You know, so when he said, will you be the head coach? I said, oh, okay, I will try. I did, I did that for about a year and a half before service. When I went to service, I was feeling ready in my mind. You know, I was like, yes. I've coached professionals, you know. Some of the players I've coached have gone to Europe and become professionals. Um, Bright plays for the Austria win now. He played under me as a, an academy player. Um, Ibrahim Salah, who, uh, the boy in uh, IK Stats now, what's his name? Aremu. Aremu. Aremu played there. I was there on the first day he came from me, but, you know. So I coached him, took him to matches, you know. So to see that kind of player now become a professional yeah. is, is, is very inspiring. Is, you know, so I, I went to service. I was posted to Enugu, you know, and the camp was in Okunono or somewhere. Yeah, Okunono. Yeah. So we were in one village for the orientation camp, and there was rumors flying about that everybody will post you to the village. If, the only way to get to the city is if you are in the state team. I, and I was not really playing football every day. Why? Well, I, I know how to play football. Like I know now that I coach, I still will say that I yeah. know how to play football. So I, I said, okay, let's do this now. Because the only way to get to town, and I wanted to be in town, was to be in the team. So I we played the tournaments, this platoon tournament, and I scored one great goal. I can still remember the goal in my head. And the coach said, okay, I put me in the team. I was in the state team for a new goal. But when I get, got to the state, I was not going to the state because that was not my plan. Yeah. I wanted to be in the state to watch Rangers. Rangers was the attraction to be in the capital. I wanted to watch uh, the coaches and learn from maybe the eastern part of Nigeria, how yeah. they do football. I see half football is yeah. over there. And Rangers is a big club 
in Nigeria so it was the attraction. So immediately I got to Enugu. I was not playing football in CDAs anymore. I was just going there to mark attendance. I was focusing on coaching. I joined the team as an amateur player, Enugu Angels, to play and train. So I was playing football on, on one part, maybe twice a week, and I was um, coaching a Purple Crown College, Enugu, uh, preparing them for the Shell Cup. So we played the Shell Cup, Zonal State, XYZ, and then came to Lagos, won the Shell Cup. So you coached that team to yeah. win the Shell Cup. Back in Lagos again. Back in Lagos. Wow. Um, I just told my parents I'm in Lagos. What are you, what are you doing in Lagos? I came to play Shell Cup. Shell Cup. Like, you are a youth cop now. We told you to go and do something else. Why are you? Just... Well, you're serving Nigeria. Yeah, but, yeah, but, are you... but they posted you to a girls' school. Yes, that's what they did, but, you know. I had to follow the the passion brought me here again. I didn't go home. I just stayed there, like uh, Teslim finished and we went back. In the bus, I was still marking my scripts as a teacher in the school. Um, so after that, it gave me a lot of motivation again. Like football is possible, but the reality is I have no coaching certificate. You know, but I have experience now at least at grassroots level. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. So I started saving up got inquiries about NIS. So when I came back to Lagos, I, started, I came back on a Tuesday. I was in training on Wednesday morning at the border for the Sujusas Academy. You really, you really needed to be a coach. Yeah, I, I was back there. Was there any point you wanted to prove with this coaching team? Yes. The point that I wish to prove and has been a driving force is that, you know, when, when we watch football, on TV, yeah. there's the kind of football that we like to see. Yeah. And when we see that football, it's associated with a certain type of coach or coaches from a certain region of the world. Yeah. We are a lot of black coaches and Nigerian coaches. However, we are not associated with anything, anything. defining the game. Yes, we, we're just there coaching because we have to. Um, I particularly wanted to show that we can. We have the mental capacity, we have the, you know, what it takes to compete at that level. We can learn and build the know-how. Yes, and so that's the fire that burns in me every day. All I can say there is Godspeed. So let's continue the story. Yes, I go back to training and we, um, we started working immediately. Um, after a few months, there was a tournament on the pitch and there's some teams came to play but they had to wait for us to finish training of course i didn't know anybody was watching i was just doing my job so after that some some gentlemen came to meet me that if bad moss uh, he was the head of um the director of football at click sports academy so he what's in click sports academy click okay. sports yeah so he came to me and said look we want you to coach our team it's like i'm coaching this team he said we really want you to coach our team i said okay I'll see you after after now. I went to Dosu Joseph, I told him. Somebody approached me. He said, speak to them now. It might be your first job. I said, okay. So we spoke and they said, yeah, I want you to coach our team. We have a team of, we do some school programs in some very good schools, blah, blah, blah. You will have a lot of control to, the, to develop your yourself while you're developing the team. Okay. It looks interesting a yes. new challenge i've been in west for five years you know it's time for a new environment you know so i told the boss and he was like yeah you can you can take it we didn't discuss salaries at the end of the month the first i started january 6 2014 at Oroshoki. at the end of the morning where were you staying i was staying in uh, Songwater, Ogun state you're coming to Oroshoki to yes. coach. i remember my first day of training i got there at 6 a.m and it was seven o'clock and the players stayed in a camp and they were still sleeping. And I spoke to the man on the phone, the director was like, I'm on the field. It's like, time is seven o'clock. I said, yes, now it's 6.15, it's seven, but they have to be at the field at maybe 6.30. You don't get to the field at seven for seven o'clock training. No. Is that how it is around here? So this has to change. I was like, okay, we'll try and get there. So I was waiting for everybody. And I told them like, look, this is the first day we are meeting, but I want to make a mark in this job. You people have to join me or we have to, we can work together. So it was the first day and they got to 
understand like look this is the direction that i'm going to discipline is not it, it's not something that we consider <music>